All right. Today we're installing in a 2019 uh, Nissan Frontier. Installing unit for Verizon Connect. Zergo. First thing you want to do is prep your harness. Most of these GPS companies want you to do it. <clears throat> you wrap tape around this guy right here. Rub zip tie. That's just to prevent anyone from getting into these fuses without a little bit of work that you'd obviously didn't see when you showed up because most people definitely don't rewrap it and put a new zip tie on if they're pulling a, view, a fuse out. Uh, next thing you have some extra wires here. Uh, these are just PTO wires. They're literally meant for hooking up to like say if you wanted to know if the seat belt was plugged in or if the vehicle had a dump bed and you wanted to know every time the vehicle uh, dumped its load. Alright, so next up, prepping the harness, we're going to be using a hook and loop method or wrap and strap if you're uh, poke and wrap, uh, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty easy to do. And you're going to do a chassis ground. So make an eyelet on the ground side. As you can see, I'm stripping these wires back. Boom, just like that. Get them nice and twisted. Eyelet and a screw out. Eyelet for the ground. in there nice and tight tug make sure it's not going anywhere and there you go harness prepped ready to go um, all these extra connections here by the way we have uh, usually that's used for driver ID uh, this one's usually used for a panic button this one would be a Garmin cable and then that one would be the driver ID buzzer so it buzzes at you and annoys you if you don't buzz in you know thankfully today we're just doing tracking only so that's not needed for any of those so next up, take apart this vehicle. I'll start down at the back, uh, kind of B-pillar with a panel pop tool. Make sure you get a plastic panel pop tool so you don't damage anything. Beat on up into the kick panel here. Take that, set it out of your way. Side panel off here. There we go. Yeah. A drill I'm using this 20 volt DeWalt I bought like five years ago that's still working wonderfully. I'll hold the charge for a week or two at a time without me having to plug a new battery in. And take this knee bolster off. I'll turn the vehicle off too at some point. This one you could go one or two places. Uh, you definitely could go to the actual ignition itself, which is up in here. Uh, there's additionally some wires in the kick panel you can do. Uh, right today, though, we're going to focus on the actual ignition. literally just unplugs from the back of the ignition which you can see you can follow it from the key all the way to the back about a foot behind it and there's a nice big plug with six wires in it it's always good to test your wires make sure you're plugging into the right ones 
I already kind of know which ones to go to, but just for fun, we'll go ahead and make sure. And for this, you just want to use any multimeter set to DC or direct current instead of alternating current because that's what vehicles are direct current. So you know, stick your ground somewhere. Plug in to whoops. Just test them right at the ends of the pins for the 12 volt. And it looks like our 12 volt wire is dark green. And uh, I'm gonna plug this back in for a second so I can check the ignition. Gotta have it plugged in to obviously check the ignition. Uh, thinking it's the light going next to it, but I am going to check it first. White wire is an ignition, but not a true ignition. Problem is you need the ignition wire to not drop voltage when you start the vehicle up. Otherwise, it's not a true ignition and the GPS may see it as you turning the vehicle off and back on. So. That's not it either. doesn't go on with accessory it only goes on with ignition and it does not drop below 9 volts when you crank the key that wire is, ah, is white with a green stripe so we're gonna be connecting to a dark green and a white with a green stripe at the ignition All right. out of here. All right, should have a screw somewhere. You grabbed earlier. You always want to ground any 12 volt accessory first before you connect all the other wires. Otherwise you can blow fuses or whatnot, especially because if you hook up the power and then the ignition, it might try to pull ground through the ignition wire and that's never good. You see, I'm just gonna Screw this to the brace right next to the ignition stuff. With a self tapping screw. We'll go, it's nice and secure in there. Um, and we're going to start hooking these bad boys up to the actual wires here. Now to do a hook and loop, this is the tricky part. <clears throat> hook and loop method here. Let's see if I can get this in at a good angle for you. Alright. Not sure how well that's going to work, but we'll see. So the basics of a hook and loop. Oops. Let, me, let's, let me see where I can stick this. Right. Gonna stay and see. should have brought one. Let's try to do this video. Well, there's your ground screw, by the way. Okay, I know that's kind of at a crap angle, but you'll get the point. Okay, so your hook and loop method, real basic. You're gonna want to 
get to this wire. This is your 12 volt wire, so if you're worried about it, disconnect the battery. I'm a professional, so I'm not worried about it. I'm going to strip it back just like so. You're going to grab a pick and poke a hole right in the center of it. Just like so. Next up, you're going to want your red 12 volt constant wire. And you're going to poke it through the hole. Just like so. Oops. And you're going to want to wrap that around at least twice. I got about two and a half wraps. Okay, so the key to this method is, you see, now no tape whatsoever. I can tug on this wire and it's going nowhere. And that's why this is such a, a secure connection, okay? Um, and then next up, we're gonna want some tape. Apparently, I need a fresh roll, it's fine. Doesn't really matter what kind of electrical tape you use. You can use cheap stuff or the good stuff because you're gonna put a zip tie over it anyways. So, just to hold everything in place. No matter how good your tape is, you definitely still melt when it's 110 degrees inside these vehicles in the summertime, so. All right. Get you some tape. It's probably a little too much, but that's okay. Now you're gonna to want to wrap it around the wire nice and tightly. Like I said, I used a little too much, but that's fine. Don't know need to probably probably three to four wraps of the rounded are usually sufficient but we'll do a little extra on this one all right so now that's nice and taped okay next up I'm gonna throw a zip tie or two around it depending on the company you're doing it for at least one and sometimes two so Verizon only requires one company I contract services through requires two. So, there's our two zip ties. And of course, snip the ends off. All right. So, now you have a very secure, hook and looped, constant wire. All right. Let's see if I can get this somewhere again. I just had to mess it up and pick it up. There we go. Alright, now we're going to do the same thing, only to this white wire, and that's your ignition wire. So again, you just want to cut back the insulation. You're not cutting the wire. You know, you're, I like to use kind of dull wire cutters if you got some old ones, just so you don't have to worry about cutting through any wire strands. Cause that's kind of the whole point of this. It's not to destroy any wiring. Okay, see, there we go. It's got this hole in it. And you're putting this through the hole. can't close it with your fingers get some pliers in there but I'm usually pretty good about that say so again now wire going nowhere okay and they prefer this method because they don't have to send techs out to plug in wires from failed connections because that's a lot of money for GPS companies to send someone like me out just to repair a simple wire that got pulled out they want me there fixing actual problems, not poor installation problems. All right. In case you're wondering, that wasn't a gunshot. It's just real close to the 4th of July and there's fireworks afoot. So, 
All right, next up, a couple zip ties on these as well. Again, one on the tape and then one right at the end, right past the tape on the actual wire kinda, or at the very end of the tape, either way. It's like right there. Okay. And snippity snip as well again. See, my phone just dropped. All right, so. There we go. I'm just gonna plug this bad boy back in. And so there's your whole connection. Boom. Um, now you should be able to see on the device amber light is should be blinking which I'm not sure if you can tell from the lighting it is though I promise I put a little hand over it and you can kind of see it there we go all right so blinking light means power it has power but not uh, not ignition yet so now what we're gonna do is kind of sit it up there turn the key on verify that it's getting ignition status and again that orange lights going solid that means it's seeing ignition there's also a green light right next to it once that if you can see that again so hard to see during the sunlight here but I promise there's a green light next to it that blinks too but that's just verifying that it's getting seeing GPS signal so all right, next up, I kind of want to leave it out there on the dash, uh, label side up, so it gets, it's got to have label side up to get a good GPS signal. And you're just leaving it there long enough for it to connect, basically. Like, that's kind of the point. Um, now you're gonna come down here again. You're not quite done in this area. All right. So, Thing we got left to do is put a little torque seal um, on our connections and this is just to prove that no one got into them so you just want to put a little bit on one of those zip ties a little bit on there a little bit right there maybe in between and then finally you're gonna do a little dot right where it actually connects to the box as well and there we go that's pretty much it. We gotta mount it and make it look pretty, but we're done. Uh, you still gotta check it in with the app, uh, or if, you, if you're not a an actual Verizon Connect installer, you can just uh, call it in and let them know it's working now. Call whatever customer support number you have. Um, and the main thing that we're gonna do to mount this now is you don't want to have any kind of metal above it all right so as long as there's not a giant thing of metal directly above it then you're good okay so in my case i'm going to mount this bad boy uh, right over here i don't know how to get a good angle on it um, Sit the phone right there for a minute. All right. Show you guys where I stick this in just a second, but not not rocket science. Just, you know, don't put it right below anything giant and metal, so it doesn't interfere with the GPS.
can actually feel if you stick it up on the back side. I can just reach your arm directly kind of right up straight from the back of the firewall as far over as you can get. You can feel some vents and whatnot. I literally just have this wedged in between a uh, harness and a vent. And it's not going anywhere. Normally I would throw a zip tie on it, but it's nice and pressed in there. So we're good to go there. Again, label side up. So again, it's going right up the firewall. Let's see. This is wedged right up in there. As close to the top as you can get is what you want. And uh, we're pretty much done. Just need to wrap up the, the wiring here. Make it look, not look ugly. And uh, not be hanging down in people's way. like that so again we've got connections at the ignition ground right there the wires tied up neatly right on the other side and unit back up in the corner back you know back here basically it's, it's about there and that's about as standard as it gets on doing these type of installs. So now I just got to do it another, I don't know, five or six times today. So um, with that, I hope it helped and have a good one.